Proponents of exempting school construction projects from prevailing wage believe current law drives up costs for schools without delivering a better product. That's the premise of Republican Senator Will Schroeder's Senate Bill 9. Prevailing wage is the hourly wage and benefits paid to the majority of workers within a particular area. Schroeder says that passing his bill will allow schools to stretch their funds for other projects. As many of you know, Kentucky's prevailing wage law currently requires that prevailing wage be paid on all public construction projects that are estimated to cost $250,000 or more. What Senate Bill 9 does is specifically uh, Section 3E of Senate Bill 9 is it excludes prevailing wage on construction projects for educational facilities. As my members of this body re may recall, this was the precedent. This had actually been done from 1982 to 1996 there is that exception on educational facilities. Passage of this bill will greatly save school districts in this commonwealth money. A recent legislative research commission study found that prevailing wage requirements increase labor costs on sample school projects by 51 percent relative to what labor costs would have been without prevailing wage on private projects. The same study determined, and I can't emphasize this enough, that while workers' wages were increased with prevailing wage, there was no indication that the quality of the construction was changed whatsoever. Schools are paying more for construction with absolutely no guarantee for better quality. This money that will be saved with Senate Bill 9 can be used by the school districts to go to other things and other projects. And with this, Mr. President, I would like to move for the passage of Senate Bill 9. Senator Mike Wilson, who is the Senate Education Chair, says he's discovered that the same people who work on prevailing wage jobs also work on non-prevailing wage jobs, but prefer the former because of better pay. Wilson says that difference comes right out of the taxpayer's pocket. Since 2008, when the downturn of the economy happened, our education, our schools have experienced loss especially in their funding, and they've had seek shortfalls. Mr. President, this is an opportunity for us to give them some relief. There's been talk about the quality of the work that seems to be the constant argument. Well, Mr. President, I have some contractors that do some of that work that actually live in my district. And I've talked to them about this, and I've asked them, do the same people work on prevailing wage jobs that work on non-prevailing wage jobs? He said that is absolutely correct. He said, my guys love prevailing wage jobs because they make a little more money, because we have to pay the prevailing wage. And I said, who ends up paying that? He said, the taxpayers do, because they have to pay more for that project than they would if it was a regular commercial project. I said, so you're telling me the same people work on that project as they do a commercial project. Do they put less quality into the government project than they do a commercial project? He said, absolutely not. I hold them to the same quality standard that I would for a commercial business when they're doing a government project. So there's no difference in the workers that you're going to have working on these projects, but we, the taxpayers, who we represent, are having to shell out more money. Our education system is having to shell out more money for these facilities that we need for our children to educate them in. And Mr. President, for every four schools that we would build under prevailing wage, we could build another school for free if we were not using prevailing wage. So, Mr. President, I rise in support of this bill, and I encourage all my members to vote yes. Thank you. To the contrary, Senator Ray Jones believes the prevailing wage exemption takes a shot at the middle class. In his view, any savings from construction costs comes at the expense of the workers. 
The Democratic leader in the Senate says studies show that repealing prevailing wage laws have resulted in reduced worker wages and benefits and higher on-the-job accidents. And some people want to say that this is an anti-union bill. I don't see it as anti-union. I see it as an anti-worker bill or an anti-middle class bill. Because what we do know is that states that have repealed prevailing wage see several things happen. One, they see a reduction in wages and benefits for people employed in the construction industry. They also see increases in fatality rates and the injury rates of workers in construction industries. You know, we hear about how much this would save Kentucky. And let's be clear about this. If this bill passes, which we all know that it will pass out of this chamber, the simple fact of the matter is any savings that would come would come at the expense of the construction workers. And there is nothing in this bill, there is nothing in this bill that would limit how much the construction companies profited. You know, if they cut wage benefits to get a job 20% below the prevailing wage, where's that 20% going to go? One, co one contractor cuts it 20%, one cuts it 19% below what a prevailing wage would be. The company that cuts it 19% on the backs of the workers that do the work, they get the contract. Well, how much of that's really going to go back to the school district? There's nothing in this bill that would mandate any savings going to the school boards. And, you know, some people say that, well, you know, some of our school districts, particularly bigger school districts, have top-heavy administration, people making six-figure salaries with little or no teaching responsibilities. The simple fact of the matter is this bill will not do what it is intended to do. And I will stand here on the floor and tell you that there may be some areas where changes need to be made in terms of the way that prevailing wage is calculated. But we've not seen a bill come out that says we're going to take a look at how prevailing wages are determined in the local region. What this bill does is it essentially throws the baby out with the bathwater. Republican Senator Brandon Smith of Eastern Kentucky says the loss of coal mining jobs in his area is forcing workers to relocate. He views support of the measure as a responsible action given the hardships of struggling families. As people are losing their jobs, they're unable to stay. And we're seeing people migrate out of Eastern Kentucky to Louisville and Nashville and many other places. But for those that remain and their children, it shifts the burden over on them because we, our schools are in, in pretty rough shape. And the last little bit, we've been replacing them. We've been trying to build new schools. And so that increases the burden on those that are paying the school tax. And if you have any doubt, ask some of the people in your community that are senior citizens that are paying a school tax that haven't had children in the school system for years, and they're going to tell you in a hurry this is a point of contention for them. So if we've got a chance to be able to make every one of those dollars count for education and make it go as far as possible right now with the trying times that I'm being served at home, then it would be irresponsible for me not to do so. Now, I'm not saying that prevailing wage, uh, this is going to cure all the issues with it, but I do think it's a step in the right direction for those of us in southeastern Kentucky struggling with, with shrinking dollars. I will tell you, I met with some workers, and one of the workers was telling me uh, last weekend that he's a very skilled woodworker. And he says what happens to him very often is if the person he's working for has a, a private job or something that he's got to work on, he'll send him over there to do that work and take somebody with a lot less experience that's been hired in the last two or three years and send them to the prevailing wage job, therefore knocking him out of getting a salary of what he's worth. So I think there's problems here. And I think the workers, for those of you that have friends that do this for a living, will tell you that very often that their qualifications will have them sent over to somebody else's house where they have to do a really fine finished product, and they're going to get paid a lower salary when somebody that has one year experience will be assigned to a school and they'll get paid a higher wage. I personally think that our schools deserve the very best craftsmen that they can get, and I think everybody in this room feels that way. But I think the way the system is now is that it punishes people that have greater level of skill and, 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 and um, expertise by receiving another job with lower pay. And I think it shorts those of us in the school systems that want our kids to have top quality uh, facilities. So there's clearly a problem here. And hopefully this may be a step in helping address that. Thank you.
Like Senator Jones, Carter County Democrat Robin Webb says her constituency is made up of construction workers, and she believes there's no proven cost savings to eliminating prevailing wage. I represent a high concentration of some of the most skilled tradesmen and women in the world. I also, um, and they do quality work, and they, the taxpayers of my district deserve that quality work as well as the children that we house in these uh, educational facilities. They need to last. They need to be durable. There needs to be a safe workplace. There is no, uh, the majority of studies uh, show that there's no real cost savings, if you will, when uh, prevailing wage is eliminated. And on behalf of the working men and women, uh, talented working, dedicated working men and women that carry a lunchbox to work every day, I vote no. Will Schroeder, Senate Bill 9 that exempts school construction from prevailing wage law cleared the Senate on a party line vote 26 to 11.